Modernized vertical farming is an amazing blend of varied technologies like big data analytics, robotics, the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and many other ultra-modern ones. With the help of these technologies, vertical farming is now an energy-intensive system of crop production and now can easily grow them without any agronomic constraints. This integrated method of agriculture is entirely dependent on different hardware integration, data collection, data analysis, and automatic control of the installed devices within the structures. So once this vertical farming came into existence and boomed, it was obviously not viable to offer field crops or low-value crops because returns of investments are not worthy. All thanks to extraordinary IT companies as their technology is helping crop cultivation and facilitating smooth data collection, data analysis, and automatic application of actuators. So keeping all these factors in mind, vertical farming is helping crop production to be more competitive and profitable. However, it's not the one technique that's optimizing the growth of the crops in vertical farming, but three varied techniques suit the best according to the crop. Every vertical farm chooses its method according to its need and crop type. So let's take a deeper dive to know what are these techniques and which is the best suited technique for vertical farming. There are prominently three varied techniques, namely hydroponics, aquaponics, and aeroponics. Number three, hydroponics. One of the best techniques used for vertical farms is this hydroponics where plants are amazingly cultivated with the help of nutrient solutions and which are free of soil. In this method, plant roots are submerged in the nutrient-rich solution in a grow tray. Nutrients are replenished a few times a day with the help of a reservoir below the tray, a water pump, and a timer. However, the timers in the hydroponic system are set according to the size of the plants and the water and nutrient requirements of the plants. Once the tray is full of water sprayed through a water pump, the required water is utilized by the plants and left out excess water is drained back to the reservoir because of the gravitational force. This draining of excessive water is reused in the next cycle. So with this, gallons of water are saved during the entire process. Now, what are the essential nutrients required in water for a healthy plant? The major contents in the hydroponic system are calcium nitrate, potassium sulfate, potassium nitrate, monopotassium phosphate, and magnesium sulfate. However, there are other contents as well in micro amounts like boron, chlorine, iron, manganese, sodium, zinc, molybdenum, nickel, cobalt, and silicon. The best part about this technique is it entirely diminishes soil-related cultivation problems like soil-borne insects, pests, and diseases. And it's not that limited crops can be cultivated using this technique. Almost every crop is grown hydroponically. Some of the well-known fruits, herbs, and vegetables are grown using the method indoors are strawberries, tomatoes, cucumbers, and peppers. Most of the greenhouses in China are using this technique to save gallons of water and ultimately produce tons of output with great quality. Also, the biggest vertical farm in the world in Dubai, which is soon expected to be open, has also planned to use hydroponics techniques for growing leafy vegetables in massive amounts. The best part about this Echo One is the farm has planned to use ultra-modern technology like machine learning, artificial intelligence, and data analytics. All these ultra-modern technologies will be efficiently handled and monitored by an in-house team of engineers and computer and plant scientists. Just like other vertical farms, they will also be utilizing 95% less water and are sharing a guaranteed output of 3 tons per day. Number 2. Aeroponics The second technique which is grabbing all the attention in vertical farming is this aeroponics. This method saves maximum water when practicing vertical farming as they spray the air with very little water or mist and obviously do not use soil. While performing this method, farmers hang the roots in the closed or semi-closed box so they are well nourished because of misting. In the closed or semi-closed containers, there is a foam-like material that leaves the roots seep through a mesh-like cap and dangle below into the mist chamber. There's also LED lights that are used for photosynthesis purposes. In this constant spraying of nutrient solution with a fine sprayer and hanging the roots in the air will help in the healthy and swift growth of plants as they will receive sufficient oxygen. And guess what? Aeroponics is also better than hydroponics as it consumes 90% lesser water than the hydroponic systems. And also, the fertilizer usage dropped down by 60% and the best part is crop yield accelerated by 45-75%. to a New York-based startup named Aero Farms is based out of Newark, New Jersey. The story behind this farm is quite interesting as a former steel factory is amazingly converted into a 69,000 square foot farm. The group has planned to grow 250 different types of green vegetables and herbs which will be grown in 12 layers from floor to ceiling. 
He'll be using aeroponics techniques to grow plants and vegetables, and this technique suits the best for vertical farming as it saves gallons of water. With this technique, the plant roots will be sprayed with a mist filled with nutrients which will make healthy plants. So which one is better, hydroponics or aeroponics? Let's take an example and understand why hydroponics is a better solution. Taking into consideration the cultivation of tomatoes, to grow 1 kilogram of tomatoes, an intensive farming technique requires a whopping 400 liters of water. Using hydroponic tomatoes requires 70 liters of water. And lastly, aeroponics only requires 20 liters of water. So now we have clear numbers which say it all. Now it's pretty clear that the most suitable option for vertical farming is aeroponics. It is using 70% less fresh water and in this technique, aeration of nutrient solution is unnecessary, so eventually the system is more profitable and easier to monitor. But it's not that there are no disadvantages to this incredible aeroponics technique. Farmers have experienced a few challenges while using this aeroponics as the nozzle sometimes gets clogged and because of that, the nutrient enriched water mist is not spread evenly. However, engineers are trying to solve this problem. One of the Shanghai-based a Essence Grows has developed a nozzle design that will not be clogged in between and the water is evenly spread to the plants and now can also rely on the mist system. Thanks to the integrated technology of aeroponics, which is allowing vertical farms to grow numerous kinds of produce. Number 1. Aquaponics Last but not the least, we have a crazy combination of aquaculture and hydroponics, which is aquaponics. In this technique, there will be gigantic tanks that will be growing fish and producing waste, which is really good in nutrient contents. So the waste or that water will be used as an excellent nutrient supply to grow the plants in a grow tray. The water in which fishes are grown and the water produced is rich in ammonia. So now here's an interesting part. There are nitrifying bacteria which are in the growth bed where plants are growing. So firstly, the ammonia from the water is converted into nitrites then to nitrates and finally, the solids which acts as excellent a vermicompost for the plants and also as a biofertilizer. But one thing which needs constant monitoring is the level of pH and ammonia levels in the fish tank. One such vertical farm called Garrow Farms is using the system of aquaponics. This is the best technique if they're not only planning to cultivate plants, but also breed and grow fish. If any of the farms are opting for this method, then they're relatively self-sufficient as they're not needed to rely on outside nutrients to keep the plants healthy. However, the levels of attention required in such farms are comparatively more as at a time farmers and scientists need to take care of two types of cultivation. These minerals and nutrients from fish waste help the healthy growth of plants and finally operate a closed loop ecosystem for indoor farming. However, this aquaponics is not a very common practice as some of the end users do not prefer the outputs of this method. But yes, the first two hydroponics and aeroponics are highly preferred techniques to save gallons of water while practicing vertical farming. So wrapping up for today's video, the agriculture sector is changing dramatically and there are varied trends in the market that are more efficient and also highly adopted by people so to boost the production yield, also speed up growth and maintain quality. We can already experience how vertical farming has more advantages over traditional horizontal farming. Nevertheless, scientists and farmers are still exploring the possibilities and varied methods which can provide them with the best quality outputs quickly, efficiently, and most importantly, in the limited space available. So finally, what are your thoughts and different types of techniques used for vertical farming? What according to you is the best technique suited for vertical farming? Do let us know your views in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching how amazing people have adopted the best and most efficient techniques for vertical farming, Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. See you in the next video.